This session will describe the use of location quotients to determine an area's basic multiplier. This is the continuation of the introduction to economic base that uh, was contained in a previous lecture. Just by way of a quick review, when we do economic base analysis, we divide our economy into two categories. Basic sector, that which produces for exogenous demand or external demand, some kind of sale to somebody outside of our regional market territory. Um, and our non-basic sector, and our non-basic sector satisfies uh, local condition. It either provides goods and services to take care of the basic industries, or it provides goods and services that satisfy the needs of households. Now, we can assume that some sectors are primarily producing for export sales. And these are easy, agriculture, manufacturing, mining, tourism. And I could add to that all kinds of government institutions, especially state and federal government institutions. And doing that type of analysis, we can generate a multiplier. Here is what a multiplier is in economic base analysis. All local activity, because it is either basic or non-basic, can be summed together to, to achieve or arrive at a total employment number. And because all non-basic employment is driven by changes in the basic sector, we can get a multiplier. Our multiplier is going to be total employment E divided by the basic sector B, or we can flip it around and say employment in a region is a function of the multiplier times its basic sector. So we have the multiplier and we can use that to determine uh, the impacts if we have growth or decline in our regional economy. This is the example that was used in the previous session. We determined that these categories of industries were all, through using an assumption approach, were all basic industry. Ag, mining, manufacturing, tourism by definition has to be externally focused. You can't tour locally. A military base in prison. You summed all of those basic jobs and that, are, and that was 5,740 jobs. All other non-basic jobs in the economy, the jobs that either provide inputs into the basic sector or provide goods and services to households, those jobs number 3,800. Total jobs is 9,540 jobs. So our multiplier is 9,540 divided by our basic sector, 5,740 jobs equals 1.66. So that multiplier means that for every basic job in my economy, there's 66 one-hundredths of a non-basic job. Well, this is all fine and good uh, in the short run for determining your regional multiplier, but we can do better. And we can improve on the assumption method by using some relational measures to basically which measure specialization in your regional economy. And we use that what's called a location quotient. We don't begin with an a priori list of export industries like we did with the assumption. Instead, we use a statistic that, again that's called a location quotient to determine the industries that are likely to be producing for external demand. So here's what a location quotient is. It's a measure of industrial specialization. And we're going to compare our economy to the national economy in this instance. The location quotient is simply the percentage of local jobs in an industry compared to that same percentage at the national level. So let's work through one. Let's say that Iowa has 10% of its employment in industry I, any industry, but we're assuming industry I is an industry that's producing for external demand, and that the US average for that industry is 2.5%. So the location quotient for that industry I is 10, 10%, divided by the national average 2.5% equals four. Now, the location quotient of four means we have four times as many jobs as the national average. And as a consequence, we would consider ourselves specialized in that industry, and therefore we are certainly producing for export. If a location quotient is less than one, we are assuming that given national averages, we're not self-sufficient in an industry. If a location quotient is greater than one, and especially if it's greater than 1.25 or so, then we are producing for export. 
If the location quotient is greater than one, we are producing in excess of local demand, but not all of those jobs are producing for export needs. Some of those jobs are producing to satisfy internal demand. So we have to use a formula to estimate the number of jobs in a particular industry that are producing for export demand. And that formula is the export jobs equals 1 minus 1 over the location quotient times the number of jobs in industry I. Let's work through that. So if our location quotient is 4 and there are a thousand jobs in industry I, pretend it's a manufacturing firm, then 1 minus 1 fourth times 1,000 equals 0.75 times 1,000 means that of those thousand jobs, 750 are producing for export demand or 750 of those jobs are basic jobs. Now you see how this distinguishes from the assumption. Under the assumption approach we would have assumed all 1,000 of those jobs were producing for export demand. But under this assumption we sort out the number of jobs that are producing for local demand and after local demands are met then we figure out the jobs that are producing for export demand. So we have 250 jobs producing to satisfy local needs. 750 of these jobs are producing for external needs. So here's our example. The location quotients, I have just assigned them here. In another uh, session I'll show how to do location quotients. Here we're just simply using location quotients and I've already shown how a location quotient is calculated. So I have location quotients. Agriculture is highly specialized at 10. Mining and manufacturing not quite as much at 2 and 2.9 respectively. Tourism highly specialized with a location quotient of 20. Military base those are very rare so the location quotient there is 50 and the prison is, is a little bit lower. So we can calculate, remember the formula, 1 minus 1 over the location quotient times the jobs in the industry I is going to give us the number of these jobs that are basic jobs are producing for export and the difference between that and the result of that calculation are going to be the jobs that are producing for local demand. So under this method then we get a more restrictive definition of basic sector jobs and they they are all calculated here in turn and we sum them all together and we have 4890 basic sector jobs and then we have non-basic jobs that are in the basic industries and those non-basic jobs are satisfying local demand. So we're going to not count those anymore as basic jobs. Those are now uh, jobs satisfying the local needs. And so all other non-basic jobs was 3,800 plus 85, 850 gives us a non-basic sector of 4,650, a basic sector of 4,890. Our total economy hasn't changed in this scenario and so we we calculate our multiplier the same way total employment in the region divided by the basic sector employment gives me a multiplier of 1.95 what that means is that for every basic job in my regional economy there are 95 one hundredths of a job or to say it differently for every 100 basic jobs in my economy there's 95 other jobs in my regional economy. One way to apply that multiplier is to say that if we lost 100 manufacturing jobs, the total economy, once those multipliers work their way all the way through the economy, would lose a total of 195 jobs. It'd lose those original 100 basic jobs plus 95 other jobs. Now remember, this multiplier only works on the basic jobs. It's not all 100 manufacturing jobs. It would be, have to be 100 uh, basic manufacturing jobs and doing it this way without with, with by with by just doing it on the on the 100 manufacturing jobs would overestimate the losses because we're not all of those jobs were, were producing for export so let's look through this and show how we make an adjustment to this formula let's say we're going to lose 300 manufacturing jobs in our economy and and we want to use our multiplier appropriately to calculate the, the X expected job loss in our regional economy. And we can recalculate the total economy and the size of the basic economy afterwards as well as recalculate the regional multiplier. But what we really want to do is calculate the total expected job loss as a function 
of our already calculated multiplier times the number of those jobs that are considered basic job. So here's our economy, and we're going to lose jobs in the manufacturing sector here. Okay, right here is where we're going to lose our jobs. And we can see that not all of those jobs, but a good fraction of them, are producing for export, but a still substantial fraction are producing for local demand. So the items that we need for this analysis, we're going to lose 300 manufacturing jobs. We need our multiplier. We need the location quotient for the industry. That manufacturing location quotient was 2.95. We want also, just to make sure we have our, our original statistics, our original basic jobs, 4890, our original total jobs was 9540. So what we need to do now is calculate our total job loss is going to be our multipliers, 1.95, times our basic jobs, plus our other lost jobs as a consequence. So the first thing we have to do is apportion the manufacturing jobs between basic and non-basic jobs because that's the whole point of using the location quotient approach. Otherwise, we're just using an assumption approach. We want to use the location approach, approach to be a little bit more accurate in our evaluation. So with a manufacturing location quotient of 2.9, we use this formula, 1 minus 1 over location quotient times employment to give us our, our estimate of basic jobs and non-basic jobs in that industry. So 1 minus 1 over 2.9 times the 300 lost jobs equals 0.655 times 300. And that works out to 197 jobs we're producing for export and 103 jobs we're producing for local demand, 300 minus 197. The impact, therefore, of losing these 300 jobs is going to be we're going to lose the production for local demand 103 plus 1.95 times 197 jobs the multiplier times the basic jobs 197 that are producing for export you sum that formula and you get 487 jobs lost in the regional economy and then we can use all of the information that we've just calculated to come up with some some new statistics for the area total jobs in the region 9540 minus 487 the job impact from our, our previous calculation means the economy will have shrunk to 9053 jobs the new basic jobs in the economy we're losing 197 basic jobs in that manufacturing sector so it's 4890 minus 197 equals 4693 new basic jobs. And we can recalculate now a new basic multiplier of 9,053 total jobs divided by 4,693 basic jobs equals a multiplier of 1.93.